Extreme Foolishness TV here. This is where I talk about extreme foolishness that goes on around you. I will be reacting to the guilty verdicts of the defendants in the Ahmad Arbery trial. And I'll be, give, I'll be giving guys my take. First of all, I am pleased with the outcome of the verdicts. Um, Travis McMichael was found guilty on all counts. I believe Gregory McMichael was found guilty on maybe seven or eight counts. Then uh, Roddy Bryant was found guilty on six out of nine counts, which is still good. The, all of them got convicted of murder, of Ahmaud Arbery. The scariest part of this is that these guys would have gotten away. But for the video that went viral, it's scary that the first DA, Jackie Johnson, who got the case swept it under the rug. She saw the evidence, but she covered up for these murderers. The next DA who took over the case, I think is Barnhill. He also did the same thing. They swept this case under a rug, which begs the question, do we have to have a video of a murder, a public outcry, an attorney general inter, uh, intervening in the case to take over the case and appoint an outside attorney general, I mean, an outside DA to prosecute the case just to get justice. I can't begin to imagine all the other black people who have been murdered and their murderers have gotten away just because the DA refused to investigate or prosecute the murderers. It is scary just thinking about that. It is scary. And the lawyers who defended uh, the defendants in this case, to me, uh, it's just sad that they were hinging, they were betting that the jury will pretty much disregard the law and the and the facts and acquit the defendants that was the only hope that we're gonna get white jurors which they did they got rid of pretty much all the black jurors but for one and had 11 white jurors and their hope was that this white jurors are going to acquit this defendant that was it they probably just thought that hey we're gonna do some dog whistling we're gonna make racial comments subliminal racial comments like the uh the defense lawyer for uh, gregory mcmichael saying that i want aubrey had dirty long nails so she probably was not focusing her energy on making a good presentation on behalf of her client. She was focusing on getting white jurors and hopefully having these white jurors acquit the defendant based on race. And I'm glad that you had fair-minded white jurors who saw the facts. They followed the law that the judge gave them and gave a just verdict. And I'm pleased with the verdict. And sometimes, like, I've tried cases and I don't choose my jurors based on race. I choose jurors based on who do I feel is most qualified to render a fair verdict based on the law and the facts. You can't just rely on race, 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 which is what those lawyers did. You had the lawyer for Ruddy Bryant saying he doesn't want black pastors to come into the courtroom from the beginning this case was all about race you got three white men chase down a black man down for five minutes he tried to get away the driver behind would not let him get away they pull out a shotgun confronted him he defended himself and they shot him the police officers who responded came and gave these guys the benefit of the doubt. They were treated like queens. They were not treated like murderers. Despite the fact that the person who was murdered was unarmed. You had a DA who knew these folks and swept it under the rug. You had another white DA who swept it under the rug. 
until the video came out and went viral and the outcry. I'm pleased with the verdict and I'm glad that at least it's a step towards racial reconciliation in this country. I think that in the deep south to have a predominantly white juror render this verdict, it's a big deal. It's a big step in the right direction. We still have a long way to go, but it just gives me hope that there are good people out there. It gives me hope that you can have fair-minded jurors who can look at the law and the facts and render a just verdict irrespective of the race of the defendant. This man, Ahmad Aubrey, did not deserve to die like that. When you have uh, Gregory McMichael saying, we trapped him like a rat. Complete disregard for the value of human life, especially a black life. So I'm really happy about the verdict. Uh, I think rightfully so, they'll spend the rest of their life in prison. Um, I'm sure they're going to be appeals. First of all, they will probably file a motion for a new trial. It's going to get denied by this judge. And they are probably going to appeal it. And it's going to be affirmed by the Supreme Court of Georgia. I just don't see how uh, the Supreme Court of Georgia will reverse this sentence or this conviction, shall I say. I just don't see it. Because most convictions are upheld if there's any evidence to support it. There's more than enough evidence. This case had overwhelming evidence. And the defendants pretty much got what they want. wanted. They wanted it. And predominantly an all-white jury. They got it. Uh, they asked that Ahmaud Arbery's history of jogging should be excluded. They got it. When uh, Travis McMichael shot Ahmaud Arbery and said fucking N-word. That evidence did not come in trial. They got that. They argued their case. They represented their clients to the best of their abilities. And the jury rendered a verdict. And we should all respect the jury's verdict. And the thing about it is that it's just sad that I think they did their clients a disservice by not telling their clients the truth that there's just so much evidence in this case against them. It would have been better for their clients to take a plea. Even if it were for 20 years, 25 years, at least you know you're going to get out at some point in time. Especially for Travis McMichael, I think he's in his 30s. Had he taken a 20, 25 year plea, at least you get out in your 50s now with a murder conviction in Georgia. It's a mandatory life sentence. And you have all this uh, murder convictions. It's, they're all life sentences. I'm so disappointed at the lawyers, though, especially uh, Laura, the, the female lawyer, and uh, the Roddy Bryant's lawyer, who said black pastors should not be allowed in the courtroom, who sought to exclude black pastors. And the lawyer who said that uh, Ahmaud Arbery had long, dirty nails. What does dirty nails have to do with somebody being shot in the chest, hunted down, trapped like a rat, and killed? What does it have to do with it? Nothing. She was only hoping that it would trigger, I guess, the white fear of black people in the jury and they would just acquit the defendants. That was her only hope. And all their, they bet everything on that, which is why they went to trial hoping that we're just going to get an all white jury and they're going to acquit this white defendants. Like, how will this white jurors? convict a white person will just kill a black man like you know the black man's life doesn't matter that was their strategy and it didn't work they took a gamble and lost and i really felt like uh the lawyer for roddy Brunt had he done a good job in negotiating the plea early on in exchange for his testimony against the mike michaels he would have gotten a good deal maybe five or ten years he will have testified against them and he will be out in five or ten years. But he chose to stand with the lynch mob. And I guess they're all going to serve life sentences together.
guess united the lynch mob stands and united they will serve the rest of their lives in prison thank you very much for listening i appreciate you guys let me know what you guys think in the comments it's 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 a great day though i feel i, I feel like there is some kind of hope in the air because if you if you saw the reaction of um i'm on aubrey's dad in the courtroom he said he never believed this day will come it's like a lot of black people are just they've lost hope they've lost hope that you know that their lives does not matter they've lost a lot of hope and i'm glad that that hope for whatever it's worth even if it's a glimmer of hope is still something that this country can now begin to come together and we can i guess have some kind of unity and that black lives will matter appreciate you guys again for for listening you know subscribe if you haven't subscribed hit the bell i would love to hear from you guys in the comments let me know Stay safe out there, my lovely family. And most importantly, say no to extreme foolishness.